Hello. I, I've got the worst room in my house because this is the only place where uh, hop-in works. Oh, well, we can hear you well. Yeah, and uh, it's like, uh, it's basically my daughter's room. <laughs> can you see my screen? Just, yeah. Yeah, can. It's coming. So let me see. We can uh, just zoom in and out, right? So if you want a bigger screen, just zoom in and out. Yeah. Um. Oops, what happened? Yeah, I think it's tough because Singapore is is yeah. now uh, work from home and school from home, home-based learning, HBL. Yeah, yeah, exactly, and that's the big WFH and HBL. Like we need more acronyms. <laughs> I think this is a better thing. Maybe just yeah, put like the bundles of wires, but yeah, that's how it is. Okay. So um, we've got. How are you doing, by the way? Yeah, I'm. I'm fine, thank you. Yes. How many meetings have you had today? Uh, so, this is the first roundtable for this event. Oh. Yeah, I noticed we have got some people who have already joined, uh -huh. um, because we're about one minute early. <laughs> so some people are already here. I think we're going to have quite a few people who have already been to the earlier. Uh, events, right? No, that's Mo fine. morning no. workshop and so are you, forth. Are you in a rework right now? Yeah, I'm in a co-working space. It's actually allowed. Oh, is it? Okay, I didn't know yes. that. I would have well, gone. if you work for a company, technically it's not. Oh, okay. But if you come as an individual, then then it's okay. But technically, we should be wearing masks. So. Uh, yeah. It is indeed not the easiest of times. Yes, we have our friends in India, so uh, we we'll just wait for a few more to join. Yeah, I think they join, uh, keep on joining in, out, in, out. Mm. I love that. Just give it a few more minutes. So what were the earlier sessions from Confluent? Let me see. Um, there was one on uh, building event-driven APIs. Uh, yes. Done by Naveen, I attended. I think there were about 21 or 22 people on that one. Hmm. And I think there was another one. Uh, I forgot the name of it. Yeah, just looking the agenda. Yeah. Yeah. So we have 30 minutes this time, right? Let me see. According to the schedule, it's it's 25 minutes. But as okay. usual, we see who's who's coming and um, how much interest there is. We can always overrun it. But accepting that there's a workshop starting afterwards and two, two main track sessions. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's see, we've got quite um, a few people here already, so why don't we just kick, kick, kick it off, right? And um, Ananda, thanks for joining. We're both in Singapore. Hey, um, thanks a lot, Jonathan. Pleasure to yeah. again see you and, on video. <laughs> yeah, thank you. And we're going to be talking about a similar topic that we've run in other, other locations. Um, around uh, financial services and transformation with event-driven um, data. Presumably some use cases. Um, already know the big bank names, right? Uh, Citigroup, RBC, DBS, from, from our perspective. I'd like to learn more about uh, from India's perspective. And uh, we're gonna just delve deeper 
into uh, how streaming data has helped build these uh, modernizations and transforming the financial services um, and doing that in conjunction with existing systems, legacy systems, fraud systems, and also taking account of some of the questions that we've had already come in. So I don't think there's been any change. You're still uh, the solution engineering head for yeah. Confluent yeah. in Asia. Yeah. And you specialize in innovation and, and building ecosystems and getting the microservices adopted. Uh, with, with what does that mean? That means it, it, it's a bit of getting new customers. Also, it's about uh, making sure existing customers are successful. It's, it's both actually, you know, um, and uh, first of all, you know, Confluent is actually quite well known in India. Uh, it's, uh, we are partnering with some of the biggest digital brands as well as, you know, uh, heritage brands in India. So uh, people in India are very familiar with Swiggy, for example, Hotstar, you know, uh, Baiju's, uh, Freshworks, and these are all people, you know, who use uh, conference solution to provide uh, a lot of interesting services uh, in India and on the other side you know we have a lot of banks like uh, Access Bank, uh, you know IDFC Bank, uh, National Stock Exchange etc etc who have also been early adopters. So what do we do? Uh, we help you know modernize the ability of both digital natives and uh, new companies uh, as well as heritage companies to participate in the uh, platform economy. Now, what do I mean by the platform economy? So in India, you know, our, our, our friends in India are, are surely using Google Pay and Phone Pay or even Paytm. And, uh, you know, that is a classic example of a API driven economy that is completely driven by multiple different platforms, right? So Google Pay is a PSP, uh, UPI is a government provided uh, interface that allows for transactions and various banks participate in it as well as various merchants participate in it to provide a lot of value. Now Confluent actually is helping banks to ensure that their core banking systems are not getting stressed out. So what does that mean? Now, the earlier core banking systems that were built, whether it is Finical, whether it is, you know, um, FlexCube or even further ahead, Oiltail, et cetera, they were actually all built for what is known as high value and high volume transactions. The world now is of high volume but low value transactions. And maybe rather than me talking, let me share with you sort of like the technical history of banking. Is that okay, Jonathan? That's yeah, true. I think you, I think you've got a few slides. So we we'll do this. Uh, it's nice to have a visual, and then after that, uh, I'll take a few questions that come up in the chat, or provide a few questions that people submitted earlier. Right. So give me just a couple of moments, and then I'll just yeah. try to. Um, so do let me know when you can see my screen. We'll do. My mouse is a bit jumpy, but. Yeah. I definitely can see your screen, perhaps not yeah. what you wanted to show. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we just just give me a moment. Okay. Or maybe I'll just uh, stop. This is much better. Yeah. Sorry. You you've got a PowerPoint, is it? No, no, it's 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 a it's a, it's it's my mouse actually. You know, it's it's not anything else. Is my mouse not behaving the way it should be behaving? Okay. <laughs> well, you, 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 did, you did excuse yourself earlier, right? And uh... Yeah. Uh, you know what? Uh, I'm, I'm not going to share my screen. I'm actually going to talk about it, right? So um, my apologies to the folks on the, in the meeting. Um, so in the 1960s, which is when the uh, first element of computation came in in the banking industry, it was primarily mainframes with 3270 uh, terminals. Uh, the interactions that were done in banks were largely in branches. And the transactions that happened largely happened through, you know, uh, mechanisms like uh, cash in, cash out, 
etc these were the days when uh, you know you needed um, uh, you really did transaction beyond your geographical boundaries uh, this sort of carried on till the 1990s in the uh, sorry 1980s uh, in the late 1980s uh, there were a couple of things that came up okay so one was the atm or the teller machines uh, which allowed you 24 by 7 access to your money in terms of cash and the other was the clearing house system in the united states which allowed for you to move uh, you know uh, your money between states between locations etc uh, to to folks in india who are old enough and you know uh, of my generation you remember these were the days you know uh, when you were studying in our universities and engineering colleges when your dad or your mom sent you a draft and that draft making was a huge thing because a check took anywhere between 15 to 30 days within india to get clear uh the 1990s actually changed a lot of this uh, the 1990s saw the emergence of client server technologies uh the second thing that happened was the ability of uh, you know core banking systems to do real time not real time exactly but at least shorten the end of day processing and do uh, transactions much faster and last but not the least you know this emergence of this little thing called the internet uh, i remember in 1995 it came in and everybody was talking about how and why the internet could be uh, of value uh, but you know it was of great value the 2000s actually then changed banking dramatically and this is where uh, we see banking as it uh, you know uh, remains today in most cases uh, so 2000 saw the emergence of a lot of different channels we had uh, contact centers we had atms we had internet you also saw the emergence of mobile and of course you know branch and all of this stuff right and uh, then came this technology paradigm called soa or service oriented architecture which was to take information out of the mainframes and make it available through a middle, middle tier and and process information in a much more straight through manner uh that happened and everything was going hunky dory banks were actually providing pretty good multi channel services etc but around you know 2006 2007 2008 was a humongous event which was the coming up of the iphone once the iphone came the with it came social media and that sort of brought silicon valley into the area of banking social media changed two dimensions of banking the first was the control on the consumer or the customer social media the internet giants they started controlling the customers the banks became a participant rather than the owner of the uh, client relationship so in 2015 2014 you might have heard the famous thing from jp dam uh, from jimmy dam and the uh, ceo of jp morgan who said that silicon valley is coming and that was that uh, inflection point that where banks as well as other financial institutions said that if we do not change if we do not make ourselves easy to work with aka have apis participate in platforms it's going to be very difficult so what we now have in terms of financial institutions or even digital natives is the system where there's a independent ux and apis to communicate both externally as well as internally and this has created unique experiences you know in india for uh, for example upi is a classic example on the payment side amazon has created some very interesting experiences in india with the help of you know uh, flexible payment options at the point of checkout on your card and these are simply not possible without apis so you know that's that's where this entire uh, value of microservices apis and uh, confluent like solutions to un unlock the value in your core systems are coming out and providing essential capabilities to consumers in india wow so that that was like 20 years and it's really speeding up um i mean what's all the hype about kafka um so, you know we've, we've heard of it um what's so special about it and how does it work in financial services in particular who seem to be early adopters so what's happening is that you know uh, as people are moving towards microservices uh, they are realizing that you know uh, 
uh, there is the older technology is not built for it. So the older technology was built for, like I said, you know, high value, high volume transactions. I mean, Jonathan, look at you or me in a day, every day, we look at our bank balance three times as if it is changing, right? It does not. But we do it. Why? Because we have a mobile phone and a bloody app and we just check out and see, you know, how much is our bank balance or whatever. Nothing changes there, right? Uh, earlier, perhaps we, we would do it twice a month or twice a month when our payroll cycles happen and things like that. So now what is happening? Your core systems are now being hit by a string of microservices which are demanding your real time balance. Now you have two options, either you keep on extending the core systems or you do something about it because, you know, essentially all of these requests are for free. There's no charge to it. So each of these transactions are a loss making proposition to the banks. Now, what does Kafka do? So Kafka, number one, offloads a transaction, number one, right? Second is if a microservice, let's say, which is doing a credit card transaction, needs to work with a fraud microservice as well as a, a real-time offer microservice, it automatically makes any data that has been refreshed in, by any of these microservices, all of the other microservices. So anyone who publishes or subscribes data gets to work with the most up-to-date information. Now that's one core value. The second one is retention of data. I'll give you a simple example. Uh, so ATM fraud, right? Uh, you would have heard of these things where, you know, suddenly you keep on getting these notifications on your phone that, hey, someone withdrew money here, someone withdrew money there, etc. cetera. Uh, a notification can be a very, very important thing because what a notification does, it, it, it not just uh, makes a user, a consumer aware that such a thing is happening, but it also tells uh, backend systems that, you know, uh, there are these weird patterns that are happening. Earlier, all of this used to have with stale data. So at the end of the day, a batch run would happen. Based on that batch run, people would check where, where, with what latitude, longitudes these transactions had happened. And then either, you flag, either the consumer would have flagged out or you would flag out. Now what you have with a solution like Kafka, which is you know data in motion, real-time data in motion, is that you can make directly systems intelligent by computing, you know, how can you make three transactions within five seconds, one in Mumbai, one in Kolkata, and one in Bangalore? Now that's an obvious fraud, right? And you detect and block the card in real time and provide immense value to the customer and also provide a lot of risk mitigation to yourself as a bank. So these are you know, some prime examples of how uh, okay. the Kafka is helping banks and financial institutions. Okay, so what I'm just hearing there is about criti critical events and timely, and then building in these applications as part of it, like intrinsically fraud detection uh, from what you've said. So it's it's that layer which is very relevant to the type of data and the type of usage. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm already looking at time and we've got like five minutes left, but of course we can carry on. What, what this session is about is is for any, any of the uh, participants to just ask anything. And, and it will be on the chat, and 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 it can be addressed. Um, there were quite a lot of questions coming in, and that was one bunch of the questions. The other thing is, what's what's changed in the last year? You know, why? You know, in terms of transformation. Uh, yeah. India is at the forefront of the digital economy, right? And COVID lockdowns and all of this is is simply you know uh, something that has accelerated it to different heights. I mean, thank goodness for things like Aadhaar, thank goodness for things like, you know, uh, UPI, as well as the entire digital systems like Swiggy, you know, uh, Hotstar, etc. These have allowed for uh, entertainment, grocery items, you know, like a Freshworks, for example, uh, commerce, as well as payments, and, you know, a lot of other such essential goods to happen. A lot of this is actually powered by, uh, you know, Confluent and Kafka. And uh, this is where the value comes, right? Uh, where organizations are now realizing that perhaps the old way of doing things is not the best way. There are better ways at doing some of these things by providing much better unique capabilities, you know, uh, leveraging some of the 
um, uh, unique uh, platform capabilities that India has. In particular, financial services, Kafka, event-driven, um, it's all very well consuming these services. What's happening at the back end in terms of event-driven? Uh, there's transformation, there's more users, there's more transactions. How, how, can you help us visualize how that works with Kafka, how it works in a financial services? Is it actually taking work load off the exist, existing systems? Is it maybe payment systems or what, what system would it be, e-commerce? To, uh, let's take a payment transaction, right? Where, what happens when you hit a UPI uh, transaction in India? So a PSP originates a transaction. It can be Google Pay, Phone Pay, etc. It hits NPCIL, which essentially does a uh, you know verification uh, whether this is a valid device, valid request, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then it goes to the uh, settlement uh, bank. That settlement bank, uh, you know, essentially have uh, a couple of things. So number one is that it has to check their fraud management systems. Number two, it has to check their balances. Number three, you know, maybe if they have an offer system, they need to check those offer systems and actually provide all of this together. So if you have that kind of situation with the existing technologies like enterprise service bus or MQs, you first land up with a problem of scalability. Why is that so? So these are broker-based applications. So you can scale them, but each broker has a limitation. With Kafka, you have almost the ability of processing in an infinite manner. Second thing, can I store the data in my existing queues, queuing system, messaging systems, etc.? You can, but not at an infinite level, right? Which means that there is no auditability possible in a, in a scale of this level, etc. Third is, is this cloud ready, cloud native ready? You know, um, how do you do this at an optimal cost. You remember that example that I gave you of balance inquiry, right? So all of this is, is allowed today by Kafka, number one. The second thing is your most preferred transactions can now be offloaded off the core systems and which usually used to come as a queue is now available as a serialized input into Kafka and all the pub sub, uh, all the subscribers to this information get the most up-to-date information, reducing the load on the backend core systems, whether it is your credit card systems, your core banking system, or your payment systems also. Mm, so Antwi was asking similar questions. Did you see it? Yeah, he was speaking to that. Yeah, I, I saw that question. So I, was, mm. I was giving some examples. Mm, mm. So scalability seems to be one big topic. Scalability. Um, then, uh, you know, the second one is the cost of doing this. Third is usage of uh, more modern technologies like Kubernetes, etc., which allows you to, you know, go up, go down. Uh, fourth is uh, data retention. Uh, you know, uh, fifth is uh, zero data loss solution, especially in a geographically uh, separate manner. Wow, I mean, you're calling out words here, but I think these these are these are pretty big deals. Oh yeah, I mean, I can give you the last one is especially important in financial yeah. services. Imagine if you are doing a transaction, and uh, and for some reason, you know, like uh, yesterday, Mumbai had a sad event like a cyclone. Um, for some reason, that transaction break because your network cable gets flooded. Now. We have the ability, you know, to switch transactions, to hold transactions, and through a variety of mechanisms like a stretch cluster or a mirroring solution, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to ensure that transactions in flight are not lost. You know, that's that's an amazing capability, you know, uh, that we actually bring to the table. Yeah, uh, and and people need to hear about it if they don't know. I guess that's the whole point of these events. Um, okay, look, I'm, I'm looking at time or a few minutes over. If I may just ask you one other group of questions that came in, and this is about um, mm, best practices, recommendation, challenges, um, and then just API management. So quite a lot in these this grouping of questions. A so lot of it is where do we get started? Where can Confluent help? What do we need to do? So I think, uh, you know, uh, the best uh, starting point, irrespective of whether you're on a, a digital native or an enterprise working there, just go to AWS, GCP, or Azure, 
or go to confluent.io, look at Confluent Cloud. We have given you a $200 voucher. Just go there, sign up, start using it, you know, um, uh, Confluent Cloud, and, and start putting some of your real-time use cases, right? Number one. Number two is uh, how to get started. Uh, we have, you know, a lot of information in the public aid arena, as well as training programs, whether it is from Confluent or other providers. And, and these are not expensive. So you can actually go there and, and take some of these, you know, and uh, start putting some of your use cases that you have and then just playing around with it, right? If you, if you do want to talk to us, you know, um, I mean, uh, we have some contacts here. Give us a call or download some of, uh, you know, our stuff. We will, we will get in touch with you and get you started up. Yeah, so I, I think, you know, thanks to everyone who's come here um, and trying to make that, that, that personal connection as well. Uh, so, Ananda, would you be available or apart from the corporate side, would you be available? How would you want people to con connect with you? Or so LinkedIn is the obvious mechanism. Uh, it's the easiest one. Uh, but, you know, we also have a booth here uh, that we are running and uh, some of my colleagues will be in the booth. So, you know, just 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 drop in, say hi if you if you have any specific question. And if they're not able to help, you know, our, our colleagues or me will definitely step in and help out. Yeah, so it's a good time to get people's attention, get access to people on a more uh, personal level, even though we're separated through through a screen. Correct. Uh, don't don't be shy to reach out. Yeah. Um, so as usual, time is time is up, and this is more to respect other people will be uh, going to other sessions. Um, so Ananda, thanks very much for this. Um, will you be able to hang around by the chat window for a bit in case? I I will. Thank you so much. much. Yeah. Right. So I will release everybody who, who's attended. So thanks everyone for attending. And thanks once again, Ananda, from Confluent for your, um, your stories and experience. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Okay. Thanks. We'll just hang, ar hang around here for a while. <laughs> no Thank need to keep you. the camera on. Um, I'll just uh, close off the camera. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Take um, care. Bye. Bye bye.